Tom, and we are talking today about new year and new goals. Yes, but we were in, in the last year and we were all very eager to say bye-bye to year 2020. And here we are saying hello to 2021. So a very warm welcome all the panelists and all our audience. And if you're watching us on Facebook, YouTube, hello to each one of you. This webinar is more about we all getting together across the globe and talking about what has happened in the last year? Was it funny or what? And, and for me, the funny thing was what happened to the astrologers who were predicting stuff in 2019? Where did you all go? Where did your predictions go? 2020, nobody had seen. All right, great. So on this note, we are going to start. Here is the flow of the evening. We will talk about how has the year been and what is our learning and what is the achievable goal for the next year, which is this year. And of course, we are going to talk about ECDF. It is because of them that we meet here once again. So I want you all to think that you are at a New Year's party. Yeah, well, yes, this is going to be a fun and, and relaxing webinar. So. I'm there, I'm there. Super! Yes, very nice. Very nice. Yes, we're going to pause this and we are going to start with our evening and all good round of applause to each one of us. Super. So I'm going to um, share my screen and I'm going to set get started for the evening. And once again, a warm welcome to each one of you. Uh, Indrani, you got to help me here if uh, it is visible and uh, we are all good. Just give me a second. Yes, Simran, it's uh, visible. You just make it full screen. Sure, we'll do that. Okay, here we are and a very brief introduction to who we are. Uh, we are Early Child Development Forum, a part of the Acharya Foundation. And what do we do? So as an NGO, uh, our mission is to empower educators, parents, and other stakeholders in the field of ECE. And um, we have been very instrumental even during the lockdowns via our training programs, our awareness campaigns, our leadership programs workshops, seminars, and webinars, and a lot of community activities. We all need to take a moment to remember that while when we are doing this, all the proceeds that are collected goes towards a charity uh, for the betterment of uh, children in marginalized sections. All right, these are a few of the uh, pictures of our uh, webinars, and most of them have been on the issues which are very sensitive, have been sensitive all throughout the last year, uh, parenting and pandemic, we've been talking about stress management, management for educators on these webinars and we have been doing a lot of projects um, we do encourage you to visit our website to know more about our projects and how we are making a difference and here are some of the pictures from last to last year and we are not just limited to the world of ECE we are going beyond that we do a lot of different work and one of that was a flood relief distribution. And we stand out in our NGO work because we are walking the talk. I'm very proud to say that I have been associated with ECDF for almost a year now. And I'm very, very proud to be associated with a person who dreams, leads, and has the vision of making a difference and she does her bit. All right, we have done a project called as Naba Uday, which is being done uh, in Sonapur. 
uh, on the occasion of Children's Day, and we did this during the Corona time. This was basically to encourage the little ones to, you know, study, come to school, and we did a lot of distribution of books, notebooks, stationery items. And again, we request you to visit our website to get a glimpse of this. I have also written a blog, and that is also somewhere on the website. And yes, you can make a difference wherever you are, whichever part of the world you are. You can make a difference when you're committed, right? Because we all make a mental note, say we will do, but until and unless we are not committed to a cause, we cannot make a difference. So one of the way to be committed is to become a member. And to know more about this, please send us your request through chat boxes or you can even leave comments on Facebook or YouTube and we will get back to you. And there is of course, uh, membership uh, information on Facebook as well. And this is our information, how to reach us. Uh, events that you um, should not miss, there is this uh, one day certificate course happening, fostering writing skills in early years. And I know a lot of parents would like to talk about this and understand uh, the importance of this. So do register this for 22nd January. And we, of course, have a very, very mega event coming up uh, on 12th of February. This is the Global Conference of Educators and Stakeholders. And uh, we are looking for speakers. And if you are one of the educators who would like to contribute, please get in touch with us. We still have slots open. And yes, what are we going to do today? And we are going to talk about a year gone by. And let's see who all we have with us. So we will be warmly welcome Dr. Vasavi Acharya, who is the chairperson and head of ECDF. Put your hands together. Thank you. Super. Very nice. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. We, will, we welcome uh, Miss Diana. Uh, she is joining us from US. Diana has worked as teacher, administrator, coach, and consultant, both in public education, nonprofit organization, and private education. Uh, a warm welcome. Yes, awesome. I can hear the applause. Uh, and we also welcome from Malaysia, Azura. She is head of early childhood program uh, with Veritas University College, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. A warm welcome. We uh, welcome Aisha from Lahore. Uh, she's a trainee clinical psychologist with certification behavior therapy from BACB USA. We welcome Sana from UAE. She is Mon Montessori directress, trainer, speaker in physical and mental development of child. Wow, super. And last but not the least, we welcome Brian from Dubai. He's teacher trainer in pedagogical transformations. Wow. Oof. We have heavily loaded panel of speakers, and this is going to be an interesting evening. A warm welcome to each one of you. But before we start this, we have a very, very special thing that we are going to inaugurate today, and that is that is our magazine, which is ED Can, and this is the fourth issue of our magazine. And of course, we do everything with the music, so we want an inauguration music. And I will take a moment to show everyone how does this magazine look like. And I will request Dr. Vasavi to talk to us about what goes in making of ED Clan. Over to you, Dr. Vasavi. Thank you, Simran. And um, I welcome everybody on board today for this uh, wonderful session on New Year New Goals. Uh, now, talking about ED Clan, how I had come to, you know, um, think about this entire concept. I've been, since my college days, I've uh, kind of edited journals and uh, magazines, and I was quite a bit into writing. And uh, I always had a dream of coming up with our own publication, something that has to do with education. And when we launched ECDF in um, October, uh, in October 2019, uh, I finally thought that this is a wonderful scope to start you know, our own journal 
and uh, that would you know uh, basically have uh, writers and educators writing about uh, early childhood education and what we need to do and what are the best practices so that is how i came with this entire concept and uh, and i'm i've been elated to see the response we had in terms of you know getting articles because articles were flooding in for the first issue itself and uh, simran this is how it plan came into being and i thank everybody for their wonderful support in getting this dream making it into a reality thank you so much wow super great and let's have a very quick look um on uh, with uh, on this magazine and this is how it looks like and i encourage each one of you to get a copy for yourself i'm i'm just so amazed to see how beautiful how uh, lively this magazine is looking and i invite dr katherine to talk to us about her article in this magazine over to you dr katherine Thanks, Simran. Thanks, Dr. Vasavi, and thanks, everyone. Um, it's been a great, great night so far, Simran, with all the dancing and the music. So, you know, thanks for the New Year's party that we're having. Um, my article is is about how we can help um, early childhood educators in the role that they have now uh, during this COVID nineteen pandemic. And the focus that I've put on the article is is about um, caring for the children that we always do anyway, but also caring for yourself and making sure that yeah. as educators, you're looking after your own well-being um, and filling up your own cup so that then you can look after others and care for others. Um, in the article too, I've also uh, put a list of dot points um, that describes how people might be acting if they're, if they're feeling anxious um, and feeling a little unsettled because of the changes that have happened in uh, because of the virus and you know they could be uh, they could be just angry they could be um, um, just uh, annoyed just not themselves and there's a whole list of them in the article that, that you'll see so it'll be a little easier for you to determine are the children or even you are you acting out because you're feeling a little anxious is it because of the uh, of the situation that we all find ourselves in and, and the changes that have happened that have been very unexpected in 2020 um, or you know and how how can you look after yourself if you if you notice the changes in children or if you notice the changes in yourself or in your family how can you take care of yourself and take care of them as well so that's really um the the i guess the, the basis of the article and and i'm wanting us to move from this uncertainty that we have around COVID 19 to feeling confident and secure and feeling hopeful for the future and for, um, for, for 2021 and, and beyond. So yeah. hopefully yeah. It'll, it's a supportive, help, helpful article that I've written for you. All right, great. Sounds good, Dr. Katzin. And it is always a pleasure to hear from you and to know your inputs in all the webinars that I have attended with you. And this is like super, this is like the crowd. So, and these are the things which most of us parents, teachers uh, would have a uh, experienced uh, during the last year. So very, very nice. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, Simon. All right, so let's move on and just have a look. Uh, I hope it is still visible. I just got to know uh, from one of the audience members that my previous slides were not visible. I apologize for that. Um, but I hope this, when I'm scrolling down, you're able to see. And then we have more articles. We have an article with, from Dinah as well. And I'm sure when we come to her, she'll talk about it. And we have another article uh, with uh, from Dr. Sue. And I, in fact, spoke to Dr. Sue last evening. And I was like, can you please come? But she's in all day training. And she sends her greeting. Um, and she couldn't join us to talk to us about her article. But here it is. And we can all grab our copies and we can read. Oh, that's me. Oh, nice. <laughs> Okay, so this is something which I experienced and I have pinned down something here. And you know what, let me just scroll back and this is something which stayed with me and I'll just take a minute to uh, talk about it and I'm sorry Dr. Vasabi, I'm going out of time but this one thing has stayed with me since April of 2020. 
I was in my most of like low times and I thought, oh my God, this is like really not happening, right? I can't be like in this house and not go anywhere. And then I came about this quote when Shakespeare was in quarantine, he wrote King Lear. And I thought, well, you know what? I can set myself out for some goals. And I, I kept increasing my goals list. So I was like so busy trying to achieve them and thinking about them mm -hmm. that I forgot that I was feeling it. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy this article. And then this is one more, which we have uh, interview. I, I uh, hope I'm raising everybody's curiosity to grab their copies once uh, this show is over. And there we have, we have an interview with uh, Shireen Fulkani, who's joining us right from Finland. And over to you, Shireen, talking, uh, talk, please talk to us about this interview. And of course, talk to us about yourself, because we are meeting you for the first time here on this panel. Welcome, Shireen. Thanks, Simran. And I'm really glad to be here with all of you. And it's, uh, it's my pleasure uh, writing about this uh, question and answers. And I really enjoyed it because it gave me a chance to, you know, reflect back and what did happen in this 2020 and how did I come with new ideas along with my team, changing uh, the whole uh, perspective of looking at towards education. And uh, thanks to uh, the innovation that we have in CCE Finland, is that we try to always come up with new things. And that's what we did with our uh, launching our ECSU uh, school. Uh, that's 100% online preschool. So that's what we did. And then we came, came up with uh, something like a CSU box, which we have designed for teachers and parents. So um, this interview really gave me that opportunity. A little bit about me, uh, of course, you will read it <laughs> through the interview there, but uh, I would just like to take tell a few words. Uh, so basically, I'm a researcher in the field of creativity, and my focus has been creative uh, teaching methods and uh, learning environment. Uh, so I compare the education systems, uh, basically, on the basis of this uh, creativity and school environment. So thanks a lot for having me here and uh, I wish you all well and a nice uh, new year 2021. Bye. Thank you so much, Shireen. Thanks a lot for talking to us. And here is just a glimpse of her our interview with us and it is pretty, pretty interesting. Um, there we go. And there is four. We have the importance of pain in children's development by Sue. Wow, this is one fully packed uh, magazine, uh, I would say. And I would encourage each one of you to uh, buy a copy because the proceeds, and here we have from Aisha also, awesome. And the proceeds go to a very good cause. So please buy a copy. And this is from Preeti. I think she's also doing us, uh, doing a, a kind of a certificate course with us. And this is talking about our ECDF project, which I mentioned in my slides. And here are some pictures. And this has been done in November of 2020. So I'm just gonna scroll by really quickly. And there we go. Thank you very much. And that is, that is getting us just started for the evening. And we are going to start with Brian this time. I want to do a little different, not ladies first, but we will have Brian first. So Brian, over to you, talk to us about yourself, introduce yourself and tell us how was your last year in three adjectives? Over to you, Brian. Thank you very much. Uh, hi everybody, good evening everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, delighted to be here. It's been fun so far. I hope that dancing part is edited a little bit later on. But yes. uh, <laughs> uh, yes, so a little bit about myself. Um, as you said, I now am a teacher trainer uh, here in Dubai, working for Sarasa, uh, Pedagogical Transformations. Um, I've been in education for, this is my third decade, let's leave it there and not put a fixed number on it. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so classroom teacher, secondary trained, uh, primary and, um, and also senior leadership, but thoroughly enjoying uh, the last six months. I moved full time into teacher training and 
you asked me to uh, sum up the year in three adjectives, so let me move on. Time management, I, I, I will add at this point, I failed consistently throughout my whole career. It should have been in my performance management every single year. So you have to give me a 10 minute warning, please speed me up. <laughs> if I... <laughs> um, so my three adjectives, because this is ECDF, Early Childhood Development Forum, I cheated and I spoke to my daughter in preparation for this. So my daughter and I have prepared these adjectives. Um, I, I hope that's okay. Uh, and actually, we went with one adjective, with one adjective, with three aspects of the, the so I asked my daughter, Eleanor, um, what would you say, Eleanor, um, how would you sum up last year and how it's been for you and us? And she just said, Daddy, it's been nuts. It's been absolute nuts. It's been crazy. So nuts is my adjective. Now, nuts in three ways. Number one, nuts in how we've coped. I mean, how everyone has coped, especially within the teaching profession. It's been, it's been, you know, so incredible what teachers are doing globally, preparing, blended learning, etc. But how we have coped has been nuts. The second nuts is how we have pulled together across the globe. I mean, although time and time is the value of time is, is a big talking point, but how from that uh, we have pulled together and, and come together collectively across the globe and webinars such as this. And the last nuts is um, how I think we've reflected and possibly changed priority, even through the difficulties, the hardships. It's been very sensitive. There's been obviously um, some very difficult times for many, many people. Um, across the globe. But even through that, it's crazy how much we have as, as humankind reflected and focused on priorities and come through taking strengths and positives um, from it. Superb. I like the nuts clearing. Superb. Well done. So good. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And I go to Dr. Vasavi to talk to us about her last year in three adjectives. Over to you, Doc. Thank you, Simran. And it was, uh, you know, lovely listening to the three nuts of Brian. And uh, yeah, it actually, you know, uh, kind of drove us crazy. And I was almost knocked off in the beginning <laughs> from where I was. And, you know, uh, we didn't know what to do. Uh, but then as the year unfolded, I feel that there were super learning for me. I learned a lot. And uh, I think uh, that learning would, you know, in fact, help me. Uh, with uh, with the younger generation when we talk about uh, talk with them about this phase you know so it's it was super learning for me and uh, the second thing uh, second objective I would say is adaptation uh, you know and the flexibility which is always required so I would always tell my son you know it's not the most powerful or the most um, intelligent that uh, survives but it's the most flexible uh, who survives so I think adaptation was one thing that I really learned uh, through this year and another was making a headway even if there were a lot of hurdles in our way so there was a complete change of uh, you know how we were teaching how we had to deal with the students how our centers were operating how we got from an offline to an online platform and uh, so and and while making uh, uh, without stopping one bit in it so this was my three adjectives simran Super. Thank you, Doc. And well said. It was, it was, yeah, we, we had to be flexible. I completely agree on that. Okay. All right. Moving on. Thanks, Doc, once again. And special thanks for giving us this platform to come back to on and getting all these global people here to meet and dance and talk about our last year and new year. Thank you once again, Doctor. And I move on and I go to Azura. Azura, your thoughts, your adjectives. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I am here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I am actually with higher institution over here handling early childhood uh, undergraduate programs. So I go from designing professional certificates uh, up to giving a uh, lecture myself. So three words for my 2020, I'd say interesting, um, adaptive and exhilarating. Why it's interesting? It's because I imagine it completely different. I uh, my 2020 with massive travel plans uh, and up in massive grounding and status. So here I stayed, uh, confined in uh, one spot for almost a year. And then 
from there, I become uh, adaptive. Uh, well, we have no choice but to adapt instead of uh, thinking and fighting uh, what was supposed to be. Uh, I learned to adapt and practice acceptance. Uh, well, to say in education, uh, we have to be worried that there would be some knowledge that uh, will be lost for certain age group. We might need to go back and check on that. Yeah. But at the same time, let's be positive about all the great things that this experience has given us. Um, I think we've got more independent um, teachers are, that are now better in online learning. And so, yes, I think we have lost, but we have gained something better as well. And the third thing is exhilarating uh, because I have discovered new adventure, even in stagnant, uh, change of perception uh, and view that does not require uh, or involve any continence uh, or any physical connections, uh, but through seeing moss on the stone, uh, how my home plants grow. You know, these kinds of things see that uh, most of us need to slow down to to develop, you know, uh, yeah. So that's the three things. So instead of being feeling disconnected, we are actually more connected even to ourselves. Yeah. Yes. So, so that's true. about it. This, time gave us, uh, this whole uh, stoppage of everything gave us time to get connected to ourselves. Whether it was nice or not knowing ourselves, that, that time will tell, but we really got to know ourselves. All right, great. Thanks, Azura. And moving on, Sana. What is your take? What are your adjectives? Uh, you're on mute, dear. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm Sana Fatma Larik from UAE. So I'm a three directors. I apologize. I'll I'm one to three directors along with trainer and early child education, mental and physical development of the child. So during the last year, uh, it was a very unexpected for us. And uh, because uh, during the virtual classes, I was conducting the virtual classes regarding the child, uh, sensorial exercise, practical in life, the different steps I did it, I conducted during the lockdown. I was not expected that the child developed the interest during the virtual. Never I did expect it, literally, seriously. So when I started and I was amazed that they gave a response to their development of the uh, concentration, their development of the interest. So where is the child is lacking? So I will help them and they will put a result. So it was a very amazing for me uh, due to lockdown and pandemic. It was a very unexpected for us. But I learned many things from the virtual and also for the, it, it was a very uh, confusing for the parents also, because parents learned that how to teach the child in the different methodology. Because sometimes the child comes and attends the classes, but parents didn't know how to teach the child regarding the education or regarding the development of these skills. So I learned many things from my children in the last year. And uh, the purpose of learning is to enhance my skills and to cope up the different new technologies, methodologies, and according to the child, capacity of the child. Super. So that was uh, amazing for me. Okay, good. That's so amazing is the word. Thanks, Sana. And I move to Diana. Diana, over to you, dear. Good morning, everyone. For me here in the United States, I'm in the state of Delaware. But a, a quick fact about my situation is that I am currently the director at the University of Delaware's Early Learning Center. We have approximately 20 classrooms here, infant through school age. Our school age program would be after, before and after care. But because of the pandemic, we have four classrooms full of children doing online learning here. So that has been quite a change for us. The other important thing to know from my perspective is I was only the director here for a pro not even a year, eight months when the pandemic hit. So in the midst of getting to know my staff, all this change was happening. And it wasn't until I went back and looked through my planner at the end of December that I realized all the change that had occurred so quickly. So my three adjectives, and, and by the way, thank you so much for inviting me on the webinar, are obscure because we didn't know what was gonna happen next. Uh, we had to change and now 
our phrase is pause and pivot, pause and pivot. So that's what we've been doing for, for uh, many months. It's also been very enlightening because the staff learned to pivot online learning and shift back into action quickly. And we learned about ourselves, just like everyone else is saying. We learned about ourselves, but we also were able to bond together as a team, which was really a silver lining through all of this, especially for me being a new director in this program. So inspirational is my third adjective. And because we didn't only learn how to encourage each other, we brought the children and the family along with us because you know, as a leader, you can, you can lead all you want, but if there's no one following you, you're not having that impact. So those are my three adjectives. Superb, Diana. We can lead all, as all we want. And if there's nobody following us, there's no point. Thank you very, very much. And I move to Aisha. Talk to us about your three adjectives. Aisha, you're on mute. All right, sorry. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, providing me this platform to come forward and put forward my uh, thoughts. I think it's a wonderful platform to, you know, interact and uh, tell the world what it is like to be, uh, you know, uh, going through COVID and the topic itself is very pleasant. Um, I am, um, I've been practicing as a registered behavior technician in uh, Middle East. And now I've shifted back to like, I came back to Pakistan and I'm now working as a psychometrician. Uh, the three adjectives that you asked me to tell, first one would be gratitude. I think like we all have learned how to be thankful, like how to look in, you know, the silver lining as Dr. Uh, Diana said, like you just look for tiny bit things that what you can hold on to and be thankful that, oh God, this is there. First of all, that would be gratitude that I kept, looking for the silver lining everywhere like i need to find something or what is happening this is happening and then it, it would be mindfulness we've been like we've been always running from things like anything we are just living in the future but in covid we were living in the moment we were like okay what's happening today what am i doing today what's now like we were just curious about you know our day our routine and we were even able to connect with ourselves it was like with the technology we have been so disconnected with ourselves we're not able to uh, build our insight but with covid i think like we've been able to explore ourselves so uh, i would say it it is like mindfulness and embracement like i think we have learned to embrace ourselves with covid we we by knowing our strengths, our weaknesses, by knowing our darker side, our lighter side, we, we have been able to embrace humankind as it is. And I would say like how Nikita Gill, like uh, she has put forward a beautiful uh, poetry. Uh, I, I basically love this poetess. And she said that, so especially when it feels like the world is ending, you must remember that endings are also beginnings, that there is always light to be had at the end of grieving. So I think this is so beautifully said. So, yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. Thank you very much, each one of you for uh, giving us your three adjectives and summarizing your last year in three adjectives. For me, it is three alphabets, CMC. I went from crazy to motivated to creative. So <laughs> for me, it is very simple. <laughs> I tell myself to CMC, crazy, motivative, creative. That was my pathway. All right, thanks once again. And we move on to our second segment. We are a little short on time. So we will just get one minute to talk about this segment. And we are going to talk about our achievable goal for this year. And like something which we, we truly believe is something we're going to achieve. And I'll of course start with Brian. Brian, over to you. I hope my parents aren't watching this. This is very bad manners. They taught me much better than this. The gentleman going first, outrageous. But anyway. Well, I, it's I'll not on you, it's on me. And I think all the ladies here will support me. We, we are all about change, right? Women here. So, so you can- Absolutely, get, uh, I'm for that too, just my opinion. Okay, um, you said we're short of time. So yeah. just to give a little context to my, my point, I think that when we think of what a, a teacher is, when we have a memory of a teacher, that memory is generally from a, a relationship that's built. You know, it's not from a book or a text or an experiment even, or even something fantastic in the classroom. It's the relationship, it's the teacher that makes you feel kind, safe, etc. And as we've just heard from Miss Aisha, 
Um, that connect connectivity, I think, is so important. And given the current situation and new year and moving ahead, that's why I want to think about the bond of a teacher and what that bond means internally and externally. Um, so with all that said and done, my, my thought um, for um, uh, an achievable goal is to be positive. Um, now, that sounds quite generic and positive world, positive mind, positive. But um, as a goal, I think, and as a teacher, specific teaching goal for me um, as a trainer, when I'm speaking to teachers and, and uh, when I speak to many of the teachers that I, I train, we're talking about how to remain positive. And I think that bond is so important. You know, balancing technology, um, some blended lessons, and, and it seems at the moment a lot of us are going back on online again. And to keep that bond um, the, within, the, within our classroom as we're connecting with the children of all ages, you know, and any, any, um, any goal has to be smart, of course. So in terms of making this work, you know, how can we do this? I think that grab onto something that we need in the world. Now, the positivity that we need in the world can come from anything. Uh, we could think of any sort of theme within the world. You can think of um, what's happening within the world in terms of rainforest, in terms of, you know, any global event. But as we have talked about, the time to stop and think about how the world is moving forward and what sort of world we want to live in. You know, the youth of today, listening to the youth of today, hearing the children speak. So if we take a goal of being positive, choose a topic in the classroom, begin that topic, um, begin your lesson with a quick thought on that topic. It could be anything. Now you could cross curricular, you could think about this in many, many different ways. Make it specific. It might be a book, it might be a project, it might be writing, it might be related to anything mathematical. Um, artistic, be artistic with it. Um, read current affairs, read with the children, be aware of what's happening in the world. And, um, you know, in SMART goals, of course, it needs to be timed and time effective. So um, let's have an achievable goal there within that uh, remit of being positive and, and having a positive theme. Um, within our teaching practice. Um, it's quite a lucid theme, but it's certainly one that I thought was worth sharing and, and giving that experience and yeah, building and bond and connection with sure. the children. And, and thank you for uh, elaborating us for us because positive is the word which has been going around so freely these days. So thanks a lot, Brian. Over to you, Sana, very quickly, how would you talk about your achievable goal for this year? Yes, for the achievement, for the upcoming achievements, actually, I am checking the classes from the virtual classes from the UK EYEI, Early Year Child Education, because as uh, I'm, I want to share with you all that uh, learning never ends. So it's my achievable goal. I want to complete my certification from the UK due to pandemic. It is a very, uh, you can say it is, a, we take a, we, uh, we can take an advantage for the pandemic. We can do the everything and we can take a certification so virtually. Sure. Because before a pandemic, we can't go anywhere. It is not easy for me being a mother of the two children. Alhamdulillah. No, it is, of the two yeah. children, I can't uh, travel from one country to another country. So as I'm a responsible uh, mother and the trainer and also with the Montessori directors. So uh, it is a very, uh, I, I want to say the uh, advantage and I'm getting uh, classes from the UK for the early years child education. And, and very soon I will inshallah complete my certification from there and I will get a certified. Super. And, more power and the other thing is that then the last year I did complete my bachelor's in uh, education. I went to back my Pakistan. I went to back my country there for complete my education. So due to pandemic is still uh, that uh, certificate is still in pending. So I hope very soon I will get it from there. Super. And uh, my goal, achievement goal is uh, I'm associated with uh, different uh, organizations in the UAE. Uh, as an educational trainer, so very soon I will work with them, and I'm also the member of the ECDS. Thank you, Dr. Wasavi, and you, the team. I'm working with you, and also I'm a member of the NAWAF. It is a well-reported uh, organization in UAE. So as a member, I'm conducting one-day workshops for the parents and also teachers. Super. It's very nice. Thank you so much, Sana. Uh, over, over to you, Azura. I'm sorry. Azura, over um, to you. 
Okay, uh, for myself, like my for my personal stuff, I think I would like to do more research on developing quality online education. Uh, I mean, like I can understand, like Sana here is doing the online teaching and all, but we have to really look into how to assess and evaluate children online because, as we know, that in early childhood we are observing. So how we do it online, you know, we can only uh observe them for a certain time. And then another thing that uh I would like to all of us, I guess, to look into is like uh into the new norms or I must say a future norm. Uh, because many have hoped for school to reopen so we can recover the lost learning. Uh, but many have not think about this new norm or I must say the future norms uh, that as an opportunity for us to reimagine and reinvent education itself. Because I'm not saying the education system uh, we have right now is doing no good. Uh, but yes, we have to rethink and question ourselves. Uh, how can we rebuild this system? Uh, we have to think about how education should prepare our children for real life, not just examination. And we need to seriously think how and where should ed education continue. Does learning only happen uh, in school? You know, stuff like that. So these are the significant questions uh, we have to look into because this is our chance to form new education system, especially in forms that we would not ever imagine before. Yeah. All yeah. right, great. <laughs> Sounds perfect. And all the best to you, Azura. And yeah. to Diana. <laughs> Diana, over to you. Talk to us about your achievable goals. So um, my achievable goals have more to do with the program, our programmatic goals. And um, since I've been here, at the university, we have been looking at our work through the lens of anti-bias curriculum and equity work. Um, I'm, I have also had a, um, a friendship with Elizabeth Jarman, Communication Friendly Spaces from the United Kingdom. And Elizabeth and I had done a lot of work prior to my um, moving to Delaware. So I used to be in Ohio and did a lot of early childhood work in the state of Ohio, but I brought um, Elizabeth to Delaware in March, pri right before the pandemic hit us in the States. And she is helping us reimagine our indoor and outdoor learning spaces through a uh, wow. lens of equity. And we will continue that work. And it'll, it's been very impactful already for all, all our children, staff and families. So we're excited to continue that goal with her. Yeah, wow, well, that's going to be a uh, super, my, my kind of area of learning right now is in equity and I'm working very closely, uh, closely with Finland Education, which is CCE. So I really understand the importance of this. And as I say, always more power to you in bringing about this change. Yeah, thank great. you. Thanks. Over to you, Aisha. Let's hear from you. What are your achievable goals this year? My goal, uh, I just have a single goal and it's it's very generic in nature. It's, it doesn't uh, fit to Dr. Uh, Brian's, uh, I think, definition, which acronym SMART uh, uh, comes with. Uh, it's like, I want to rise above uh, small things. So that, I think that um, that would be like, that encompasses everything. That's a very general one. But if I were to break down, I want to participate more in, in mental health advocacy and everything. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, wow, super. All right, I was thinking whether we will have time for our humorous segment, but looks like we do have time. And uh, very quickly, we will just probably get 30 seconds to a minute to talk about one humorous learning of last year. And we start with Brian. 30 seconds go. Okay, so there's bathroom ones, isn't there? Online bathroom. Uh, the child online, desperate for the bathroom, runs to the bathroom and mum says, don't go to the bathroom, don't go to the bathroom, you're still online. Oh, it's okay, I'll mute it when I flush. <laughs> <laughs> this is too good. This is super. <laughs> too good. Oh, do you, Sana, do you want to talk to us about anything humorous that happened last year? Yeah, I want to share with you here in the, in the last, uh, the, when I conduct in the virtual classes. So during the sensorial, uh, the, during the sensorial activities, when I uh, ask them to put a uh, pairing from one chickpeas from another, so children are, while the activity, they are eating. They are not <laughs> proper <laughs> holding the spoon and all the things. They are just eating. <laughs> <laughs> it was very fun for me. <laughs> sure, very nice, super. Azura, what about you? Okay, I enjoy listening to my daughter's speeches nagging. So it's like a reflection, you know? I was like, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I just lecture myself even until now uh, online. So 
let's cool down whenever you want to start to nag about this assignment or something. Yeah, it's like a reflection. I think you know these are the things that we are not aware of. Like sometimes we are talk, we talk, and you know we become ourselves and we forget that. <laughs> and you know what? Now the whole classroom thing is not a classroom just for teachers and yes. children. Now it is like a classroom. Yeah. It's like yeah. teachers and then they're in their in everybody's homes. And you know, I, I find it very humorous when I see parents walking by, you know, yeah. as if like, okay, keep doing what you're doing, and we are doing, we are going on with our lives while you go on with your lives. Yeah. So I think you all, you know, somehow got set into this routine. Anyways, yeah. over to you, Diana. Do you want to share something humorous with us? So I guess humor is in the eye of the beholder, but one of my humorous uh, moments was when I was called upon to substitute in the school age room and help the children um, get on to their Zoom calls and everything. And I'm pretty lighthearted. I'm like, we're not going to take you know this too seriously because it's every man for themselves right now. But the next day, the teacher was, our teacher was getting texts from the teachers in the schools about who was the substitute because the children weren't online on time and everything. And she was like, uh, that would be our director so <laughs> hey, I did the best I could right I did the best I could <laughs> wow super thanks for sharing that Diana over to you Aisha what is your humorous learning from last year Aisha you're on mute yeah uh, my humorous one would be, I think my, in my, like my life, like everything is turned into something humorous, like, because I try to take everything so lightly and I'm always trying to crack jokes or, you know, uh, see at the lighter side. So everybody is like, you know, you keep doing that. So I think my entire life is humor. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't have in specific to tell something, you know, this is something which happened in my entire life is like very lighthearted one. Right? And I, I, I kind of go back to uh, May of twenty, May of twenty twenty, when we had absolutely in India we are blessed and we do have help at home. And of course during the lockdown it was we were it was like almost going back to uh, you know US where you are doing everything on your own. And I remember one morning I was like sitting and having my coffee and my husband says what and I'm like what and he's like do we get started with the day? I said no. And the look on his face was like, has she gone completely crazy? Like, how can we say no? We have to get breakfast. We have to make lunch. We have to get going. So for me, that kind of thing where I was in a shell and I said, no, I don't want to. I just want to keep having my coffee all day long. So, yeah, I think that was one of my funny incidents. And, I, you know, I, we still have two more minutes and I open up to the audience. If you have anything that you wish, uh, would like to share, I see Catherine, uh, Dr. Catherine smiling, Kathy smiling there. If you have something uh, humorous to share with us, please do. Um, Simran, I don't actually have, have something humorous to share, but I do share something for everyone to consider. Um, I, I'm a big believer in giving gratitude, no matter what the situation is, to be grateful for something. You can always be grateful for the blue sky or be grateful for the warm bed that you're sleeping in or be grateful that you've got, you know, fresh air to breathe or whatever it is. You can always find something to be grateful for. And even when things are tough and we're in the times of the pandemic, pandemic, um, I think you, we can still find things to be grateful for. And my favourite saying is that if you're feeling gratitude, there's no room for any other emotion. So you can't be feeling angry. You can't be feeling anxious because you're feeling gratitude. You're too busy thinking about all of the good things that are happening in your life. So that's a, a message that I'd just like to leave with everyone from all the way from Australia. And it's like 11 p.m. at night. So that's, that's the best I can come up with. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for staying back uh, with us so late. And I really, really, really appreciate that. And on, My pleasure. On that very good, uh, grateful note, I would like to bring this evening to a close. Of course, we will go out uh, with uh, foot tapping music and saying bye. And that will be our wrap. We thank once again, Dr. Wasavi, her entire team for bringing up ED clan and events like this for putting us together. A big, big thank you to you and a lot of love from all of us. Uh, we gave it to our little children. So here is for you also a small heart. And I am going to play this music and you all are ready to leave. <laughs> <after some time. laughs>
and have a wonderful year ahead wishing everyone a wonderful year ahead let's dance into it and let's do our very best what all that we can do in this coming year, in this year that we already see and you know we, i think we'll all have a great time after this webinar now that we are all kind of pepped up yes all thank right. you simran thank, thank you our esteemed speakers for joining us today and i thank all the attendees and um, everybody who's joined us in facebook live a big thank you to everyone thank you all right thank, thank you. you so much once again and i'll keep the music playing and you all are ready to rock and roll for the evening and good night to you dr katherine thank you so much for joining us see you all